welcome back to my channel so today i am bringing you guys finally my surgery q and a i also do want to say thank you guys so freaking much for all the love on my surgery video i was honestly low-key scared to post it but i actually received more love than anything else so just thank you guys so much for that the kids so also we're gonna have three little piojos here we have daniel and both of the dogs here so if there's any weird noises it's them also the angle looks a little bit weird i feel like i'm like looking up at you guys doesn't it look weird no. Really? I think it's also because I'm standing up. Let me make sure the lens is okay. There we go. Um, I have my makeup bag down here because I have to stand up while I do my makeup. So that is that. I have like the coolest makeup bag ever. Shout out to Benefit for giving me this bag. It's like the coolest makeup bag ever, you guys. Watch. This bag basically looks like this. It is so cool. First of all, the color is so pretty, but it's like really cool for traveling. Um, you open it up. It has like this little um, baggie right here, but what's cool about it is you can also have all of your brushes in here and it has like a little thing that protects it. And it's like magnet, so you take it off, so that way you could do your makeup and have your brushes on the side. And in this little baggie, um, it comes with a little mirror, so that's really, really cool. And then it has tons of space in here for you to do your makeup. So this is like the coolest bag ever. Like I've been using it nonstop ever since I got it. So we're gonna, you guys are gonna have to bear with me because I have to keep like kneeling down to get my makeup, and then I have to like go up here to talk to you guys. But we're gonna work with this little setup because i still can't sit on my butt obviously so it's just a little bit difficult in that area so getting into this video um i did want to um do kind of like a chit chat get ready with me slash surgery q a so i'm going to be doing my makeup with you guys while i'm answering all of your surgery questions i'm going in with this glow recipe mist i love applying this before um and i'm not gonna tell you guys every single product that i'm using for my makeup just because it's not really like a tutorial um i just really want to answer your questions and get ready with you guys um but i will tell you guys some of them so for my eyebrows um i have been doing them a little bit differently so i'm going to show you guys of course i am using benefit precisely my brow pencil this is like the best eyebrow pencil ever benefit just hands down has some of the best eyebrow products out there like down to the packaging everything is just amazing um and i do use shade i'm always switching it up sometimes i use, I use i'm using shade four right now but sometimes i use 4.5 um i've even used like three but i usually stick with like four or 4.5 so what i like to do first is i honestly just go in and do like little hair strokes on the end of my brow mostly because the end of my brow is what i want to be the darkest and then I just fill in like any sparse areas. So I've learned too that less is more. You don't want to press too down on your eyebrow pencil. I just feel like it gives you a more natural and better look like this. And then always make sure that you spoolie every time that you apply any product. And as you guys can see, it just added color right there without it being too, too crazy. I feel like I'm like looking up at you guys. And then I'm basically just going to outline the bottom and then just keep filling it in. I never like to put like any product directly on the front of my eyebrow. Um, I mainly just spoolie the front because there is some product on here from brushing out the rest of my eyebrows. So I feel like that just adds enough color without making them look boxy or crazy. And that's basically like all I do. Concealer is really going to like bring my brows to life. On the end I will press down harder because the end is what I really do want to be dark. But the rest of my eyebrow I don't really want them to be that dark. but make sure you spoolie and then right here i will take like the very tip of my eyebrow pencil because it is really precise so you can really get those hair like strokes in there and then like i go i go from right here and just create little strokes careful not to go too close to the front of the brow 
And then this is really my secret weapon, you guys. This is the Benefit 24-Hour Brow Setter. It is the best eyebrow gel you will ever use. It's literally like hairspray for your eyebrows. And this really gives my brows that like feathery look. Like you can go for that like laminated brow look with this. Which is not really the look I'm going for today, but this is like the best thing ever. <clears throat> so then the front of my brow, I just brush the hairs all the way up. And you do kind of want to work a little quick with this because it does dry pretty fast. And like I said, it's literally like hairspray. And then the rest of my brow, I will brush it up as well. All the way up. And then I'm slowly going to start placing the brow hairs where I want them. So now I'm brushing the ends of them down. And then kind of moving the brow hairs where I want them to sit. Alrighty, so I moved you guys down a little bit. Um, I actually put a pillow underneath me and I'm sitting on it. I have some Arizona green tea. It's my favorite. And I'm going to put on some chapstick. This is like my favorite. It's lip balm actually, but it's my favorite one ever. And I did go ahead and finish off my brows. I actually think they look really, really good today. And I'm convinced my brows are never going to look the same, you guys. Um, but I just try to get them as even as possible because this is just my bad eyebrow. But I will link down below benefits um precisely my brow it's like the best eyebrow pencil ever this and the 24 hour brow setter it's like a match made in heaven and yeah this is what my eyebrows look like i've been loving doing them like this i've just one of my biggest tips for you guys is do less pressure they just come out better for some reason i don't know why um but i will have these linked down below you guys need these now moving on to the rest of my makeup and i'm going to start answering all of your guys's questions you guys had a lot of questions and don't worry i'm going to tell you guys the price the doctor that i went to those are like the two most common questions but i also got other questions that i was not expecting like a lot of you guys are curious as to what my family thought of me getting the surgery i'm going in with this glow recipe moisturizer i love this because it's so lightweight and it's like perfect under makeup it's like the perfect like daytime moisturizer I've used a lot and I am very careful as to what moisturizers I use under my makeup because a lot of them can break up my makeup, like my foundation and stuff, and it's annoying. Yeah, this angle is a lot better, right guys? And I'm actually loving this, like, setup. I feel like it's very, like, my old school videos. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go on my Instagram. That's where I asked you guys to send in your questions. Okay, so the first question is when did you decide you wanted a bbl by the way i miss you girl i miss you too girl um and i honestly have been doing research on bbls for so long um i always like i said i always like was kind of insecure about my body but um i never like i have i had thought like liposuction but i never really thought like bbl just because i didn't really know about that before about bbls before but um I decided that I wanted it probably like over a year ago. Over a year ago is when I like really started doing research on BBLs and doctors and stuff. But obviously it's like a surgery so I was scared to do it. Or like I just was not 100% sure if that's really really what I wanted to do. But I think like for a year or almost two already that I had been thinking about it. And then like a whole year that I did do research on it. And then finally, like, I just decided to go for it, especially because um, I knew a bunch of girls that went to my doctor, so I just felt more comfortable with it. Okay, so the next question I'm going to answer is how much I actually paid. Um, everyone's pretty much asking that. Um, what's an estimate that you paid? Um, how much was it? La, la, la. I'll tell you guys basically what I paid, and then I'll tell you guys overall um, how much I feel like I spent on everything. Also, if the lighting keeps going in and out, it's because I'm filming in natural lighting, so... That's kind of what happens when the sun 
gets all weird and stuff. So my overall surgery, my actual surgery, I paid $5,500. And that is full price. It's not like discounted price or anything. Um, but it does depend on every person. Like just because I pay that much doesn't mean you're going to pay that much. You could pay that much or you could pay um, more. I haven't heard of him charging any less than that though. I feel like that is the least... Um, and it's the most common price I've heard of him charging is $5,500. Um, but that was for my BBL, um, for the lipo. Um, I did get lipo, my whole stomach, um, some on my back and then on my, like my lower back and then on my sides. And then, uh, of course, I got that injected into my butt. Um, but I paid $5,500. I was going to get, um buccal fat removal as well and chin lipo and that would have been an extra two thousand dollars but i ended up not getting it because the doctor said that he didn't he doesn't suggest me doing both of them at the same time which and he said that i didn't really have any fat on my chin to really take off and for him to charge me for that um so i really did appreciate like my doctor i really do like him um i really did appreciate how honest he was about everything um but yeah, I paid $5,500. I have heard of other girls paying like $6,000. Um, I've even heard of girls paying $8,000 um, with the same doctor. But the most common price I have heard is $5,500. The only thing is that with my doctor, he gets expensive if you want to add extra areas of lipo. Because basically you get quoted, like let's say if you get quoted $5,500, that's your initial price. But let's say if you want to add extra lipo to your chin or your upper back, that's a thousand. He charges $1,000 per area. So that's... That's where he gets kind of expensive um but honestly i feel like his prices are very very reasonable especially for a bbl um for mexico he is one of like the more expensive doctors but compared to the states he's still really really affordable um next question is you know what the next question i'll answer is who was my doctor because that's probably that's another question that i did see a lot of people have um so I did go to Dr. Campos. He is located in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, yeah, and I found him because I just know people that went to him. And I honestly just really, really loved his work. And he is board certified, so that is another reason why I didn't end up going to him. I would not go to someone that was not board certified. Um, and he's he has a lot of experience doing it. He's been doing it for like 17 years um, He hasn't had any deaths Which is obviously like if it was a doctor that had deaths, I probably would not be going to them But um, I will leave their Instagram right over here I'll put it on the screen if any of you guys are interested in checking him out I don't mind sharing his information just because yeah, I don't mind sharing my what I paid or his information The like whole reason I'm doing these videos is because I know that there's a lot of you guys out there that probably are interested in getting this surgery as well I'm not getting paid to talk about them um, And I did pay full price recovery home. Did you stay at love your results? Thank you girl And I did stay at um, Eureka recovery home. I will also write the name over here just in case you guys want to research them um Hold on, I'm looking for my contour sticks. I could contour my nose. Did like the recovery home, not really the recovery home itself. Um, I liked the nurses. The nurses were really, really helpful. Um, but at the recovery home that I stayed at, they have like a beach house. And if you guys are going to research them, do not stay at the beach house because I heard that the beach house is not good. And um, the lady's husband stays there too, and I heard he's annoying. So, or like he's really like mythy chin stuff. So like I would not, and I, I just wouldn't feel comfortable staying there. I don't think. Um, and I've heard bad things, so yeah. But we stayed at like a different um, house, I guess, that they have. And the nurses were really helpful, so I did like them. But my, they were not my first choice. My first choice was this other place called Cocoon Recovery. But the only reason I did not go to them was because um, they were like fully, fully booked. So, um, like for the t dates that I needed. And also the other recovery home that I wanted to stay at, they don't allow guys. And I really like didn't have anyone else besides Daniel to come with me for my surgery. Like this surgery really showed me that I ain't got nobody um, besides Daniel. So yeah, um, Cocoon, I've heard really amazing things about that specific recovery home. I know people who have stayed there, like multiple people who have stayed there and I've heard really good things. I heard that their food is really good. The nurses are amazing, but um, they don't allow guys to stay there so that was one thing that was kind of like 
not ideal for my situation and for two um they were booked and they're always pretty booked so if you guys are looking into getting a bbl make sure you guys do your research um on everything make sure you guys feel 100 percent comfortable with your doctors um and yeah but that's the recovery home that i stayed at i stayed at yurka recovery home but i have not stayed at cocoon so i can't really recommend them but i would say look into cocoon first if you guys are actually interested rather than yurka but i guess yurka could be like second choice which that's what ended up happening happening with me it was my second choice but it worked out in the end anyways because yurka does allow guys to stay there so um it is a little more convenient but um yeah and then another question i did get was how much was my recovery home so my recovery home was um i think i ended up paying a total of a thousand six hundred um I think it was like 130 or 140 for me every single night and then I did stay for a whole week and then it was like a hundred and I think it was actually 160 for me and then it was 140 or no 75 it was 75 dollars for guests so for Daniel and then they charged like a couple extra fees for a couple other things um, okay and now I'm gonna go ahead and powder up I can't really talk that much when I powder you guys but this has been like my favorite powder ever this is the ColourPop no filter setting powder this is in the shade soft pink and i was kind of intimidated by the pink color of it but it's actually a really really good powder so i really recommend this this so this is the and this is the one that i have been using lately and i've been loving it i'm sorry if this video is literally like all over the place you guys um but i'm gonna continue for the questions do you think you'll go do you think you'll want to go another round um I don't think that I will just because I feel like I did get the results that I wanted and even if I I think even if I didn't get the results I want I honestly don't think I would do it again just because it's scary it's like a whole ass surgery and I don't know I just don't think that I would do it again I honestly am so grateful because I feel like my recovery has not been like that bad I feel like I've had a pretty easy smooth recovery but I don't think I will go again first of all because I did get the results I wanted and I'm saying I wouldn't do it again but maybe if I wouldn't have gotten the results I wanted maybe I would be saying something different but I don't think I will go again my whole like I really wasn't like looking for a humongous like butt like and it's like a love-hate relationship with your recovery like some days I look at my butt and I'm like oh my god it's so big and then other days I'm like why is it so small but I think it just depends and I also can't really complain because I told my doctor basically what I told my doctor was I told him I wanted like something in between natural and fake I didn't want it to look too too fake but obviously I'm paying money so I do want a nice butt but I wanted to look proportionate I wanted a nice butt and I just wanted my waist to be snatched so I don't think that I will go another round because I did get the results I wanted and also I don't know I just don't think I will do it again <laughs> maybe after I have kids I'll change my mind but I don't know I, I don't know you guys as of right now I am content I'm happy and I don't think I will go again I know there's girls that get like up to three rounds and that's like insane to me You go through it all over again no <laughs> or, or to get the results that i have now yes um because like i but also like i said my recovery has been pretty smooth i think that if i would have had a bad recovery i think i honestly probably would have regretted it because it is a surgery that you really don't need like it's something that i did just because i really wanted it but technically you don't really need this surgery you know and then once again i'm not promoting plastic surgery in any type of way don't feel like you guys have to go and get anything done just because i did it um this is just what i wanted to do and the reason that i'm sharing these videos with you guys are because i know that there is other other girls out there that want to get this surgery as well and i know that this video will be helpful to you guys and i also don't mind sharing um sharing it with you guys i don't mind sharing all the information i don't mind sharing how much i paid and what doctor i went to just because i would rather me tell you guys um about my experience me share with you guys a doctor that i already know is really really good um rather than you guys going to someone that's gonna like mess you guys up and botch you guys and stuff 
yeah the only bad thing i have heard about my doctor is that their com like their communication is not as good like it takes a long time to get a quote from them and stuff that's the least of my worries to be honest as long as he hasn't killed nobody as long as his work is good um as long as he doesn't mess me up then i really don't care did you pay in full or can you do payments? I love you and you're beautiful. I love you too, girl, and thank you. So I did pay in full, and usually when you go to Mexico, you usually do have to pay in full. Um, I know that there is places in the U.S. and maybe some in Mexico, but I haven't really heard of it over there. But there is places in the U.S. that accept uh, like credit cards. They accept, uh, so technically it's like payments because you apply to um, get a credit card for your surgery and then you just pay back the credit card company but i did pay in full and i know usually in mexico you do have to pay in full but in the u.s i have heard that or no i know that there is places that accept credit cards so technically you can do payments in the u.s how was the traveling back after getting a bbl so for me, like I said, I did stay at a recovery home for a whole week. Um, and then it depends on what doctor you go to because I know some doctors, like, don't really care. But my doctor in specific, like, they tell you you have to stay there for at least a week. Like, they, they don't want you to be traveling, like, the next day. Um, but the travel back it was a little annoying but it wasn't like anything super bad because i was already a week post-op and um i did have my drains in though so that was kind of the worst part um and then like another thing too is i couldn't really walk straight so i was literally like like hunched over and stuff and it was still a little bit hard for me to walk i did get wheelchair access though so they like took me the security in the wheelchair so it was easier and they helped us with our luggage and stuff um and then on the actual airplane the air the air the airline the the airplane ride was only a 40 minute ride so it was not anything horrible like i know there's other girls that travel like for hours to go over there and i don't think i could do that um but it was only a 40 minute long ride so it wasn't anything like super crazy it was really fast um the only thing is that they did want me to sit down for landing and for takeoff and then for when we took off i did sit down but on my bbl pillow it was just so uncomfortable because it takes a second to actually take off and um and i was just uncomfortable but i wasn't sitting down on my butt because i still couldn't sit on my butt i sat on my bbl pillow but i kind of like like stood up and like held myself up and then um for the actual plane ride i just got on my knees on the um on the seat and one of the ladies did try to tell me something like oh like if they would have known that you can't sit down i don't think they would have let you flown and i was like oh well i just had back surgery i told them that i had back surgery and i can't sit down and i told them that i had a medical drain um on my stomach so which it was actually on my vagina but um, I told them that I had a medical drain on and every time I sit down it hits it so I couldn't sit down and then the other ladies on the airplane were pretty cool about it and the airplane was pretty empty anyways so the ride back was actually not too bad because like I said like it was a really short ride um, and then when we landed I actually didn't end up sitting down I just stayed on my knees and they didn't tell me anything so thank god for that so when are you able to sit did you like your results yes I love my results and um I am about to be one month post-op, but um, technically you can sit down at six weeks, but I'm going to wait eight weeks. Um, so I still have another month to go, which is going to be a struggle, but I'm getting a little more used to it and I paid money for it and I went through pain for this. So I want to make sure I protect my assets. What was the worst part of it and how long before you were able to take care of yourself? So I think around two weeks. Um, I started feeling a little more back to normal. I still am not like a hundred percent like back to normal Like it's like it's still hard for me to like bend down and stuff Like I kind of have to like spread my legs all the way open to bend down um, And then my butt is still a little bit sore, which It's just recently started getting sore And then my skin like I still can't really feel my like my stomach and stuff like I'm barely starting to feel like Sensation again like it was literally so numb at first um, but I think like around two weeks because I think at the two-week mark is when I like took a shower on my own for the first time um, Because at first it was just really hard to do anything by myself But thank god I had a lot of help and then the worst part of the actual surgery Was the drains. I hated the drains like it was the only thing that like caused me pain 
like for me to cry and stuff like my drain was just hurting so bad the whole time um, it was just uncomfortable it was hurting and I hated it so much and it was disgusting because the worst part of the surgery too was at like day two or three um, when I would get my massages the lady um, would open up my stitch in the back and it was disgusting it was disgusting because literally after my massages I was just like dripping like dripping disgusting fluid like I would like I would change and I would put these like humongous like pads on and it would just soak right through and like just my back and my whole butt was just like wet and it just was disgusting and it was so uncomfortable and I would have to shower like twice a day and it was uncomfortable for me to shower and it kind of like was just so much effort to shower but the worst part of this whole experience was the drain um, day two and day three for like two or three days straight like I was just like wet all day and it was uncomfortable like imagine like if you peed your pants basically and you can't change because I would change and I would just like soak right through again so there was like no point in me changing so I would just kind of sit there like a freaking wet seal and I couldn't do anything about it but that was honestly the worst part and like I said the drain did hurt like that was the only thing that was causing me pain like like that was the reason that I did take some of the pain meds and stuff because um, in Mexico too that I've heard a lot of the doctors don't give you like um, Percocets and stuff because I heard that they do give you like Percocets and like Narcos and stuff um, in the US but in Mexico I don't think it's very common for them to give you that they did give me painkillers but it wasn't anything like too crazy how much fat did they inject so I took a total of 2300 um, cc's of fat out of me like out of my stomach my back like my whole like areas that they lipoed it was a total of 2300 cc's and then they injected a total of 1000 cc's in each butt cheek there was only 300 like cc's that they did not inject into me which could have been for like a bunch of different mul like for multiple reasons because for one the doctor said that at some like he there's only so much fat that he can inject in you because um it depends how like that's why i think that's why they charge different for every single person because everyone is literally so different like everyone's bodies are so different everyone's case is so different um and what he had told me too is that my butt was very tight like my my skin on my butt was very tight there's only so much that your skin will stretch out or like that my butt cheeks will stretch out um, so if you if you have like more of like a saggier butt that might be even better because they'll be able to inject more fat But for me either way, I didn't want like a humongous humongous ass anyways, so I'm really happy with the results and then it also depends what you want because compost is known for like giving you that fake fake look if that's what you want if you tell him i want a fake fake ass like that's what he's gonna give you did your mom support you on this i want a bbl my parents said no um so my mom was really support my dad was too but my dad was more like iffy about it especially when i told him i was going to mexico like i mean when i was because i was originally going to go to this doctor in beverly hills he was still iffy about it but he was more like comfortable with it uh, but when I told him I was going to Mexico, he was like, not that. I'm such a trouble. What is this? My dad was like more iffy about it, especially when I told him I was going to Mexico. Like, he was like, no, my ass, but yeah, like, they're going to mess you up. But I just told him, you know, like, that I know a lot of girls have gone to this doctor. He's board certified, and I'll be okay. Um, and then my mom was like, when can you take me to go get mine done? She would not, I don't think she would ever actually get it done. And then like my sister and stuff, like I feel like she didn't think I was actually going to do it until I ended up going to d do it. I feel like a lot of people didn't think I would actually do it until I ended up going to do it. Because I had um, one of my friends who said she would go with me to get it done. And then when the time actually came, like she didn't come with me. But I feel like it's because she didn't expect for me to actually go do it. Like I feel like... Everyone didn't think I was actually going to go through with it until I did it. They're like, oh shit, she actually did it. Um, any scars? So my doctor, he's known for doing like the tiniest little scars. Like, um, I will try to insert a picture if I have one on the screen. But my scars are literally tiny. Um, so for those of you guys that don't know how a BBL works, they don't actually cut you for a BBL. Like, it's literally like little tiny holes. Um, 
that they do and it depends on what doctor you go to because i have seen other doctors that um do like five like i've seen girls with like five different holes on their back um for me i have literally one on my back like a tiny it's like a little dot you guys and then one like right above like on my hip not on my hip let me show you guys. Right now my waist does not look snatched, but it's because I have literally like, I have two foams right here. I have a foam right here, a foam right here, and then I have a foam in the back. But literally like my little scars, I have one right here and then one right here, but they're like tiny, tiny. And then he did one through my belly button. He did one on my back. And then he did one like right above my butt. My scars are literally tiny, tiny. Like you can still see them a little bit, but they're not like anything crazy. And I'm gonna start to, um, uh apply bio oil on there for them to like completely go away but my doctor he is known for like doing like the tiniest scars because like i said i have seen other girls that have like five different holes on their back but i have one and it's like literally like the size of like my piercing um or like of a piercing okay now for a setting spray um i have been liking a couple different ones i'm gonna do first so oh setting spray i have freaking powder on my nose what am i talking about and then another one on scars do you have a big scar on your stomach area if so how big or, or small it is it so yeah like i said for bbl they don't actually cut you so that's a plus from for a bbl surgery if you get a tummy tuck then yeah you do get cut um i'm going in with this glow recipe setting spray it's amazing to give you that like dewy skin what did you eat during recovery so you do stay at a recovery home they usually do try to cook more like healthy stuff um i am just so picky like the first like couple days i could barely eat anything because i was very very nauseous like my medicine was making me so nauseous um and I'm just so picky so like the nurses already knew that I was picky because like they would cook something and they'd be like Liz you want me to make you anything else because I know you don't like anything um like the first like a few days like I was only I only ate like eggs for breakfast like for the whole day basically I could I could only keep down like an egg and um then the next days I did eat at one point they did cook like salmon and I was able to eat that but it was like more um later in the week and then um i was eating a lot of crackers um i ate chicken noodle soup the very first day too or the very first day you can't eat so after 24 hours um i was eating chicken noodle soup and then i'm using this pretty fresh um setting mist hyaluronic setting mist from ColourPop. it's amazing my new favorite i do add quite a bit of setting spray you guys soak my face and then I have this little fan that Benefit gave me and I use it whenever I do my setting spray okay did you feel anything was it painful so I did not feel anything and it was not painful um for the actual surgery after like during my recovery like i said my drain was the only thing that was really like giving me pain um what will happen to your stomach when you have a baby um i think it just like stretches out like normal um i don't think it's gonna be any different uh my girlfriend always says it's life-changing it it's really be like that she wants to do it eventually yes it has changed my freaking life i feel like a whole new person like i'm actually confident in my body and i can wear basically whatever i want now so yeah it is freaking life changing like i feel like he changed my whole life <laughs> um i'm from az also and want to do mine this year any products you recommend buying okay yes so i'm gonna tell you guys some of my favorite some some things that were very very helpful during my surgery or for my recovery and i'll also link them down below for you guys um so i definitely recommend getting like this little i got this little like pouch thing that held up my or like held my drain that was really helpful another thing that i really recommend that you need you need a female urinal to pee because you cannot sit down so you're gonna have to pee standing up and the urinal is really really gonna help you out um another thing that really helped me out was just a bunch of robes you're not really gonna need any clothes just take some robes um maybe a pair of sweats take some robes like some little night like viejita nightgowns and then a pregnancy pillow so that you can sleep um you're gonna need like a pregnancy pillow that's been like the most comfortable that i've gotten it has not been that comfortable but it's the most comfortable and it has helped me to sleep 
um, what do you have to do to prepare yourself for it? So I really didn't do anything different, but the healthier that you go into surgery, the better it'll be. So just try to eat healthy before. Um, and then it all depends on, like I said, everyone's different. So it all depends. Like your doctor could have you, um, could want you to lose some weight, gain some weight, stay the same. For me, they wanted me to stay the same. Um, and then there is some doctors that give you like a specific diet that you have to follow beforehand and after. Um, how did you get back home, car, plane, and was it difficult because you couldn't sit on your butt? So, once again, I did come back on a plane. It was a very short plane ride, so it wasn't that bad. How many places did you get fat taken out? How much did you pay? So, once again, I paid 5500 and I did get fat taken out of, like, my whole stomach, my sides, and then my lower back. Can you start eating whatever you want after the surgery, or can you start eating whatever? So... Um, it is recommended to try to to maintain your results the best you do want to start eating like healthier um, But mm -hmm. I have seen girls that eat whatever the fuck they want and they still look good um, I feel like the surgery does give you like a little bit of like little mm -hmm. um, Room to play around with um, to be able to eat whatever you want But I do want to start eating healthier because I do really like my results and I don't want to go back to the way that I looked before um, but then also after surgery, they do want you to keep your sodium as low as possible because you do get really swollen Like I'm still swollen like um, I measured myself and my waist is usually at like a 25 or 26 um, And then this morning I was like a 27 because I'm so swollen like I was just so swollen yesterday and today um, what did your family and your suegra feel about it? Okay, so my suegra. I honestly was more scared to tell my suegras about the surgery because they're very religious. Um, my family, I was not too scared because I know that they'll support, I mean, they, my suegras will support me no matter what too, and they did, but I know that they're more religious, so I was more scared to tell them, and they did tell me that they wish that I didn't do the surgery, but at the end of the day, it's my life, it's my body, you know? Um, did you have to get off birth control? So I actually am not on birth control, so that was not... Anything that I was worried about. Did you feel more inspired to do your BBL seeing other YouTubers do it? I love you, by the way. So, um, I do have a couple friends. Like I said, I know people that have gone to my doctor before. So, that did kind of not inspire me, but, like, that made me feel way more comfortable going through with the actual surgery. But, yeah, I love you, too. So, how do you guys that get BBLs do number two or you can't? Yeah, I just, like, hold in my poop, you know? Um, no, so what I have been doing to go to the restroom, which people have been asking how I have been doing it, I have just been squatting. So when I pee, I do stand up because I have the the urinal, but to go number two, I do squat. Which, it's uncomfortable, but it's what I have to do. Um, did you have any second doubts about it? So I did, just because it's a surgery, it's scary to, you know get a surgery like I said it's not something I really necessarily like needed but it's something that like you're risking your life literally to get a butt when yeah you can totally go to the gym for it but um yeah I did have second thoughts about it because I was scared even like the day of I felt like I was gonna back out but thank god I didn't because I'm fine and I love my results and I'm so happy do they look do they look at any other part of your body if you want them to ex um example arms face so yes um you work with your doctor depending on what you want. Um, you could get, they offer other areas like chin, they do arms. Um, I have heard of some girls getting like inner thigh lipo as well. Um, what, requ what requirements do you need for a BBL? So with a good surgeon, they're just going to want you to be healthy. They are going to have you do um, some blood work, usually like an EKG. Um, but it also is very common for you not to do it. Like uh, one thing I like was kind of thrown off about the doctor in Beverly Hills is he wasn't going to have me do an EKG or no type of blood work or anything. But I guess that it's pretty normal. Um, I, when I went to go get my blood work to actually get my surgery, my doctor told me that it's very normal for them to not have you do any tests because well not for everybody but she said for me she's like I'll clear you right now she's like you don't even need all these tests um, my primary doctor said that she because she said that I'm a healthy 20 year old I don't have any like um, any uh, past medical like like history or anything so that she said that as long as you're healthy you're pretty much fine which is why some doctors don't even really like do any tests they will test like your hemoglobin and stuff like the day of surgery but that's it but my doctor in specific he did have me do an EKG and a bunch of tests and a bunch of blood work and stuff the confidence to get one I want one so bad but everyone says I don't need it so at the end of the day girl it's your body it's your life if you want to get it done go do it don't like don't don't stop don't hold yourself back just because of other people's opinions I love how happy you look with your results. So happy for you. Thank you, girl. 
um do you have to pay separately for the massages so usually you do but it just depends on what doctor you choose to go to for my doctor in specific he included five massages with the price um and then i have been getting some massages back home and i have paid for those does your surgeon do more than one procedure at once? So I have heard of him doing BBL and boobs at once, but my friend that got her BBL, he wouldn't do her boobs at the same time. I think it just depends. I don't know, but for and also for me, he said that he would do my buccal fat and my chin, um, but he said that he doesn't really recommend me doing it all at the same time. Price, how much was it? Did you have any complications being so young? Um, so it actually is better that I'm young because I'm young, I'm healthy. So I feel like that's another reason why my recovery has been so easy because I'm young and I'm healthy. But also everyone is different, you guys, because there was another girl who went into surgery the same day as me um, with my doctor. And she almost had to get like a blood transfusion and stuff. Like she was really sick at one point. And she's also young and healthy, but it just that's that's what's so scary about the surgeries that everyone is so different Like everyone your body's gonna just because I had a really easy recovery does not mean yours is gonna be very easy So it's definitely something you really really want to think about What was Danny's reaction to you telling him you were going to get the BBL so Daniel was always supportive He supports me in everything that I do so he was supportive but i know that there is a lot of guys out there that are so against plastic surgery i think that they're just insecure to be honest because i don't know how did your how did your doctor communicate spanish did they make you feel comfortable so um, my doctor did communicate to me in spanish but i speak spanish but he also does speak english or no, I think he spoke English too. Did you have to reach a certain weight in order for them to put it on your butt? So it depends on the results that you're going for and it depends. Everyone is so different, you guys. Everyone is so different. Um, but for me in specific, they had me stay at my same weight. Um, but I also didn't want anything so crazy. Do they tell you where to go for your massages or do you find your own place? So for my surgeon, um, they have their own place. So I went to their place. Did you drive out there for your consultation or was it online? So I actually did not have a consultation. Um, but he does do consultations if you want one um you can go out there and do an in-person one or they do i think that they do do them online as well but for me i just i literally just sent them my photos told them what i wanted they gave me a price i booked my date and that was it and they told me like what to do before surgery like what stuff they recommend and stuff how much does it hurt on a scale of one to ten so like i said the, like the very first day like i was fine like i, I could have like gone gotten up and like lived my life but this the second third and maybe fourth day were probably the worst and it was just because my brain was hurting so bad and it was just uncomfortable like at some points i did have a couple breakdowns and just started crying because it was just like i felt disgusting because i had so much liquid i was so swollen and stuff um i think that for me like the pain wise was maybe like a four Five, even on like the worst days did your massages with lotus hurt so my massages actually did not hurt surprisingly i was honestly more scared of the massages than i was of the actual surgery because i've heard the massages are horrible but everyone is so different <laughs> what did you pack and what was your stage one and stage two faha so i am actually still wearing my stage one faha it is getting really loose though so that's why i'm so swollen but i did already order my stage two for my stage one I had a marina stage one uh faha which is um that is the brand of it so i will link that down below as well and then for my stage two i actually ended up getting a different one from this different company but um i just ordered it so i'm still waiting for that one to come in would you get more surgeries if so what type so i don't think i would get any more surgeries um the only other thing i really i don't really love of myself is my boobs i wish my boobs were like cute and little and perky but um i don't think i will actually get my boobs in just because another surgery and they actually have to cut you with that and i feel like for boobs there's a lot of complications and i just don't want to deal with that all right you guys so i went ahead and finished off my makeup i added some lashes this one looks a little wonky because i accidentally curled it a little bit too much and then i added a lippy which i just did a little bit of lip liner and then i just did the same laneige lip balm on top to make them look glossy and juicy and i've also been getting a lot of questions on my lips um i actually have not gotten lip injections in like literally over a year um if you go back to like my video on me or like my videos on me getting my lip injections that's the last time the last video i posted on that is the last time i've gotten to get my lips done i'm gonna go ahead and finish answering the rest of your guys' questions there's still a lot left and then i will show you guys um what my body is looking like right now if you had to think of one negative of this experience what would it be um one negative of this experience just like that i can't sit on my butt but that's you know you're <clears throat> kind of setting up for it i can't really complain like i said my recovery has been pretty smooth 
for people who do not gain weight easily do you think a, a bbl is a good decision so i think it depends on you if you want a bigger but or i mean you can make a consultation with a doctor and see what they tell you um it just depends what type of results you're looking for because they might want to have you gain some weight or you could get like a what's called a skinny bbl which is for people that are like very very thin can you post pics yet i want to so bad dude like i tried to take a picture like on my two weeks and i was just so swollen the lighting was not working with me like it just did not work out um and i kept and i got so swollen because i took off my faja um, i'm hoping like at one month i could start taking my pictures because i want to get back to my ig life what supplements did you take before surgery? So I actually did not take anything before surgery, but I did start taking these iron pills, but they were like natural iron pills, like you could get them on Amazon. Just to try to get my hemo my hemoglobin and my iron as high as possible. Why did you wake up during the surgery? So I did wake up during surgery. Um, I did not feel any pain or anything, thank the Lord, but basically, um, it's i think it's pretty common i have heard of other patients waking up as well because in mexico most doctors do not use general anesthesia so with general anesthesia you're like dead asleep you're knocked the f out so with general anesthesia you should not wake up at all but for the type of anesthesia that at least my doctor used um and it is mo the most common in mexico it's called um spinal anesthesia so it's basically like an epidural um but i was like dead asleep like i after the nurse took me in the room she, all she did was give me some medicine for like my anxiety and stuff and i was like dead but um at some point i did wake up but i it was like a, a second i don't remember it like i barely remember it and i did not feel any pain thank the lord because i was like numb so yeah but i have heard of it being pretty common because they only use they don't use general anesthesia you look so good and rate your pain if you felt any love you liz you have grown so much thank you girl i love you too um and my pain like i said was maybe like a four or five like on the worst days it's mainly been like uncomfortableness more than it has been pain how much was it were the incisions big so once again i paid five thousand five hundred and they're like little tiny tiny little holes you bruise bad if so how bad so i did have a lot of bruising like right underneath my boobs and then i did have bruising like right like on top of like my vagina and like my lower stomach area and then my like butt was like completely like bruised um but all of my bruising is pretty much gone now and it was like purple bruises. I have it done in Mexico and not in here. So it honestly, at the end of the day, just came down to the doctor that I wanted to go to was in Mexico. He's the one that his results impressed me the most. And I just knew that he, like, I just knew that that's the doctor that I wanted to go to. How was your overall experience with Campos and his staff? So my overall experience was good. Um, I will say that they kind of lag it on the communication. Like they, but I know it's because they have so many people that are trying to book with him. Like he is booked and busy. But overall, my experience was good. When I got there, um, he is a very like honest doctor, and he tells you what, like he tells you realistic results to expect. So I appreciate that. Um, and then his staff was good. Um, there was a nurse that was taking care of me the like the day of my surgery like right after my surgery and they were pretty good the nurse was good as well she showered me and stuff and yeah overall my experience has been good but that's the only bad thing i have heard about them um is that they kind of lag it on the communication surgery is something you kept changing your mind about and what pushed you to do it so it was something i kept changing my mind about just because it's scary but at the end of the day it was just something i really really wanted so i ended up just going through with it and i'm so happy that i did how are you getting massages now with covid19 so um i am still getting my, my massages um i did get a little bit um some like not hateful comments but like i did get a little bit of backlash for getting my surgery at this time but um what people don't know is when i did get my surgery at the time that i got my surgery like it was like it, everything was still normal you guys like the coronavirus was already like starting but it was still normal we were not on lockdown nothing was going on really like everything was normal um the day after my surgery it was like shit hit the fan like but if i would have known that shit was gonna hit the fan and we were gonna start going on lockdown and everything but we were still not on lockdown um i would have probably canceled my surgery and i know compost has canceled a lot of his surgeries like the ne for like the next two months because of the virus um and i am still getting my massages uh but my girl that is doing my massages now she's like five minutes away from me so i am still getting my massages but it's just like it's really important for me to have my massages like it's 
like essential for my recovery. Um, what was the first feeling you felt when you woke up? I don't know, I think I was just like confused. Like I was just like shocked like that I actually ended up doing it. I was just like, whoa, like it's done, it's over. Is it worth it going through all the pain afterwards? So I think if you just really want it that bad, it is worth it. I don't think that it's something that you should just right away just be like, I wanna get a BBL. It's, like this is not, like I'm not trying to promote plastic surgery at all as well. Like don't go and get a BBL just because I got a BBL. Like, it's something that you definitely want to do your research on. Please, please, please do your research, you guys. Please do your research on your doctors. Please make sure that you are going to someone who is board certified, whether it is in Mexico or in the U.S. Um, and at the end of the day, to be honest, I feel like there's a lot more bad things that I hear about Miami than there is about Mexico. So, yeah. But please do your research, you guys. Don't go just to anybody just because they're going to charge you super, super cheap. Um, cause I originally, like I, if I would have stayed in the States, I would have only paid like $2,000 more. Like the doctor that I was originally going to go to, like he was offering to give me $4,000 off my surgery to mention him in my video. So like at the end of the day, it just came down to the doctor that I wanted was in Mexico. What was so special that you had to go to the doctor that you went to and not other places? Um, it just came down to, once again, he had the results that I wanted, that I was looking for, and I knew people who actually went to him. The doctor in Beverly Hills, I knew of one person who went to him, but there were still a couple of things that I was not like like a hundred percent set on the pain tolerable so for me it has been it was tolerable now i'm feeling a lot better and it's like the only like the first week or two were like pretty bad but either way like my recovery has been really good are you in love with your new body yes i'm freaking in love with my new body like now i'm just excited because i tried on like outfits that i did not like how they looked on me before and now they look freaking amazing and i just can't wait until i'm able to stop wearing this faja do you have to go back to mexico for a follow-up on your surgery so um they do want me to go back for my one month post-op but i'm probably not going to especially with everything going on with the virus um if there was something wrong then yeah you kind of do want to go back but either way even if there was something wrong i can't really go back right now i saw your last video and saw that it requires a back ejection like the epidural is this required so um, I did ask the anesthesiologist about um, getting general anesthesia too and they said that they could do it as well but spinal is what they is the most common method that they use. So tell that you were staying at in TJ was that included in your surgery? So um, my I actually ended up staying at a recovery home but it was not included in the surgery. Are you able to put the fat in your boobs too or is it only your butt? So I have heard of girls um, putting fat in their boobs but that's not what I did. 16 LMAO what age do you recommend for me to get a BBL? So I definitely recommend waiting at least until you're 18. Um, I have a friend who's 18 and she got her BBL and she's been fine, but um, I definitely recommend waiting at least until you're 18. I don't even think that they'll do it <laughs> at 16. Like wait and see how you feel about your body later on and then decide if you wanna do it. Does your body feel back to normal? What was the worst part of surgery? I love you by the way, I love you too girl. And my body still does not feel back to normal. My butt is getting softer now though. Like I can like move it now. Um, it's not as soft as it, it as it should be yet though, but it is gonna go soft. A lot of people think, a lot of people, a misconception too about um, a BBL is that people think that your butt is gonna be like implants. It's not gonna move. It's still gonna be jiggly because it's my own fat. So once my fat settles, it's gonna be like if I, it's gonna be like if I was born with this butt, but I wasn't. Like, my butt's going to be literally, like, a real butt because it is a real butt, technically. Technically, it's not because I still had surgery, but technically, it's not implants. Um, and then the worst part of my surgery was the drains and the medicine because, the, like, the medicine had me so nauseous. I was I was on so many medications that I was literally just so nauseous. You awake during the whole procedure, so you are asleep. There is doctors that do the spinal though that don't give you no type of medication and you're literally awake. Like um, one of my friends is like freaking traumatized from her BBL because she was like awake. Um, they did do the same like spinal but she's like freaking traumatized. She said that she was feeling like the pain the whole time um, and she did it in the States. She did it in the US so that just goes to show like just really do your research whether you go to Mexico or whether you stay in the States just really make sure you do your research. The massages hurt a lot. Do you have to do you absolutely have to get them after surgery so for me they did not hurt but it just depends on your body and how you're gonna react to it um, but 
for my doctor, my surgeon, he does want you to get the massages. Like, you do kind of have to get them. But it just depends on um, your doctor because I know in the U.S., most doctors don't even do massages at all. And they don't even do drains. How long does it take to be fully healed? So, technically, to be fully healed, it takes, like, six months. Um, but... I think like at two months, I'm going to feel like pretty normal. Two, three months. Girl, you look bomb. Does your doctor specialize in breast augmentations as well? So I have seen... Um, oh, thank you, by the way. I have seen that he does do um, boobs as well. But I was not really like... like I, I, It's nice. Like his work is nice. But I was not really like super impressed with his boobs. So I don't know. You look into it and see if you like it. Did it hurt when you got the tubes removed? So I actually ended up coming home with my drain and I had to get it removed here. And Claudia actually ended up helping me out and taking them out. Um, and she's a nurse, so it made me more comfortable because Daniel would have totally messed me up. And it actually did not hurt, so... I was happy about that because I was scared that it was going to hurt. What was the scariest part of the process? So for one, my biggest fear was dying because it's a surgery and it's like the most dangerous cosmetic surgery out there. Um, there is quite a lot of risks. Um, so that was my fear, but I, I trusted my surgeon. He has 17 years. He hasn't had no deaths. And I was like, fuck, I, I would be the first one because just my luck. But thank the Lord that I was okay and I am okay and everything turned out good. Um, my other fear was getting botched and not liking my results, like having my ass come out way too big and just like not getting the results that I wanted. Um, and then my other fear was waking up during surgery which it did happen but thank god it did not hurt are you still the same size in jeans etc so i have tried on some of my old outfits and they do still fit on um, the waist um i tried on these shorts that i have and the waist was a little bit loose but um i think i'm pretty much the same size the more natural is heart shaped and pleat and price range please doesn't have to be exact so once again i already said how much i paid and yeah, I definitely think that the heart shape is, the upside down heart shape is more natural um, uh, as opposed to like bubble butt. I feel like bubble butt is definitely more of like the fake, fake look. How many weeks of recovery? You look amazing. Thank you, girl. And um, it takes around like six months to be fully recovered. Do you know if getting an epidural in your surgery can have long-term negative effects? So honestly, I have heard that after you get an epidural, you could have like back problems and stuff. So... Who was your surgeon and that did your work and does he do other jobs besides BBL nose jobs? So he does do like boobs, nose jobs and everything. But especially for nose jobs, I feel like you have to go to a very specific doctor. Um, you have to go to a very specific doctor that is like that specializes in nose jobs. Especially your face, you don't want to mess up your face. Is there payment plans? I really want one but can't afford all to pay up front so like i said usually in the u.s there is uh they do accept like credit cards some doctors not all um in mexico they usually don't but girl i definitely say um if you don't have the money to go to the surgeon that you're comfortable with um definitely i would say wait on it because you don't want to risk like you don't want to have even more risks than there already is um just to get a cheaper price make sure that you really get your bag up make sure like another thing too is guys it's not just the cost of the surgery you're gonna have to keep in mind there's stuff like first of all you have to pay for the actual surgery second of all you have to make sure you pay for the recovery home if you are going to stay at one which most likely you probably do want to um fajas you want to have extra money just in case anything goes wrong um even like ubers food like there's so many things that go into it which i will tell you guys a kind of like a rough estimate of how much i feel like i spent overall i got quoted 12,500 here in bh i don't know where that's at how much was it in mexico so once again i paid 5,500 um and i think that's a pretty oh in beverly hills sorry that's the same price that i got quoted to i got quoted i think 12,500 um and then he was giving me like 4,000 off my surgery i've only ended up paying like 3,000 dollars more in beverly hills but um honestly i think 12500 is like a like a very standard price for beverly hills which i honestly thought it was going to be way more because it's beverly hills but yeah that's that's how much i got quoted too
how do you know what to ask for how do they determine the prices so i'm not sure how they determine the prices i think it just depends on your surgeon how much you're getting um how much lipo you're getting um how much you weigh all that stuff um basically what i asked for because i know some people did ask for that as well i just told him i want you to really snatch my waist up get rid of my stomach i hate my stomach i told him i wanted to have a snatched waist i did want him to fill in my hip dips and give me a little bit of hips and then for my butt i told him to give me a nice good size butt but i do want it to go like i told him i wanted a nice big butt but i wanted it to go with my body and like i didn't want it to make my legs look too skinny so i just told him i wanted i over I told him I wanted my waist to be snatched my stomach gone and I wanted an upside down heart shape with not too much of a shaft the shaft is like when they fill in the top a lot um, I did get a little bit on the top but not anything crazy and then um, I did tell him that I wanted to look proportionate that I don't want it that I wanted to like have um, like in between like natural and fake like I don't want it to be too too natural because I'm obviously paying money and going through pain for this but I also don't want it to be too too crazy looking okay so I think that's pretty much all of the questions that you guys had for me um i did see um the last question i think i'm gonna answer is i'm gonna tell you guys how much i feel like i paid in total and i will try to do like the math with you guys because that's another question that i did see that you guys had so in total my surgery was 5500 and then my recovery home was 16 something so let's just round it up to 1700 i'm only rounding it up because you you it's better for you to have more money than than less money if that makes sense and then um what else did i pay my fajas i think they were like 125 and i got two of them and then oh no i'm gonna minus one one of the 125s because one of one of the fajas was included in my surgery so in my surgery it included my whole surgery and then it included one faja and it included five massages so in total so far what i have is 7325 is what i technically spend spent over there but or spent on everything but technically i had already given a one thousand dollar deposit so the day of surgery i only paid four thousand five hundred because i had already given a thousand dollar deposit um um, and then I took I ended up taking nine thousand dollars exactly um, with me to Mexico and then I came back and I had I think twenty seven hundred dollars left so technically out of the money that I took over there I ended up spending six thousand three hundred um, because I came back with twenty seven hundred dollars left but if you include the thousand dollar deposit that I had already given then it's seven thousand three hundred that I feel like I spent in total um, and that's not including like the tips that because we did tip our nurses that were there and then like we did spend money on like food and stuff oh and then also like airplane tickets um, I think our airplane tickets were like three hundred dollars each so I think I ended up paying like six hundred and something dollars for our airplane tickets um, but in total, I would say I spent about almost $8,000 for everything. My surgery, the recovery home. Um, I'm probably missing a couple little things. And then I also did just order a new Faja and it was like $100. And I'm probably going to have to keep ordering Fajas. And that's not including like any supplies because I did spend probably like a couple hundred dollars on supplies as well. On like, um, like gauze and then like... Oh, and then I also did buy this like cream from um, the massage people that was like another $50. I did end up getting extra medicine that was like $80 for the medicine. So I would say roughly around like $8,000 is what I spent in total. Um, and that's not including, like I said, tips uh, for the nurses. I did, we did like tip the massage lady every day too, and then like food and stuff. But definitely make sure that you have a lot of extra money. I would say, I would say have at least a good like, three thousand dollars um aside from your surgery to make sure that you're good good but also everyone is different because if you don't end up staying at a recovery home it'll probably be less um but just make sure that you guys really really do your research that's pretty much all the questions that i have but once again you guys please make sure that you guys really really do your research if you guys are planning to get any type of surgery make sure you do your research on your doctors make sure you have enough money for everything that you might need everything that might come up because like if I would have needed like some sort of blood transfusion or anything else, that would have been extra money as well. Um, make sure 
that you're comfortable with your surgery make sure that you go with someone that who, who make sure that you go with someone who is board certified and if you guys have any other questions please feel free to leave them in the comments down below and i can go ahead and answer those for you guys um another thing too that i think is helpful to know is whenever you travel with cash what i did because i was really nervous about traveling with cash is i bought this like little bag that has like a lock on it and i literally just had it in a backpack on me because usually backpacks like i feel like they're on you you're not going to take them off and I just really made sure that I always had it on me at all times when I went through security like I grabbed it and I put it on me and then when I got to the recovery home I like stuck it under the mattress and that was that okay you guys but my camera is literally about to die again please go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you guys are new guys so you guys are gonna have to ignore, ignore Bobby barking he will not shut up but um, I did put on a dress so you guys can actually see my body because I know you guys have been wanting to see it without the faha so this is pretty much what i'm looking like and i am like kind of swollen like i'm um i measured myself and my waist is at a 27 right now but it's usually at like a 25 ish or 26 but this is what my body is looking like this is me like relaxed without like going like that or anything but this is me relaxed And that's me if I were to like pose and stuff. You guys see how like I have that like shape and he definitely filled in my hip dips. There's like no hip dip. My waist is like tiny. It, my stomach is like on flat, flat. Like there's no type of belly and I, that's like me just relaxed, not sucking in, no nothing. I'm like in love with my shape. And then this is what the back looks like. I'll turn around so you guys can actually see what I'm looking like. Then I was playing Fortnite, so ignore it. What are you doing? This is what I'm showing on my butt. Oh. But this is what my body is looking like, you guys. It is like big, it's not natural, but it's not like anything crazy. I feel like it does go with my legs this is my side right here my side view front view and then this is my back view my booty and it is starting to like move more at first it was like very very stiff you can see basically what i asked for was i wanted upside down heart what i'm looking like I am so in love with my new body you guys like I feel like it's so good um once again I know it's not like it doesn't look super crazy natural but I did not want super crazy natural but I also did not want super crazy crazy dramatic um but also I'm still my fat is still settling my butt could probably still go down a little bit but I'm super super happy with my results my waist is like tiny my stomach is so flat there's like no type of panza, none. And then my booty is like really, really nice. You guys see my butt? And it's starting to like get like more like squishy and stuff. You guys see this? Ooh, ooh. And I feel like the shape of it is so like natural looking. It's more natural looking than like if it was like bubble butt. What do you guys think? I love my new body. I think it looks so good. My butt looks so nice, right guys? I am like in love with it. My butt still feels a little bit sore. Um, and then my stomach, I'm barely starting to feel like sensation. But I am in love with my new body. And no, I did not get my boobs in for those of you that are going to say that. Um, I just wear really good bras. <laughs> um but yeah that's pretty much it for this video you guys i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please go ahead and give me a huge thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it um please be nice in the comments this is my body and i am in love with my results so that's all that matters and please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you guys are new to my channel and if you guys have any other questions or anything else you guys want to know please go ahead and leave it in the comments box below and i will be happy to answer them for you guys and if you guys have any other questions you guys can also dm me i'll answer you guys and that is pretty much it i love you guys so much and i'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!